Hey everyone, uh, in this video we're going to be talking about my breakdown video for my... So hey everyone, in this video we're going to be uh, making a breakdown. This is a breakdown video of my last spec cat which is known as the Sketches Run to Find. I know it's a pretty cool name. So it's going to be a breakdown video for that. I hope you guys are really excited. Uh, we're going to cover all of the aspects of making that video from pre-planning to editing to shooting. Basically the entire process. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure why I decided to record a video, record this video right now here, but uh, it looks nice. I hope you guys like it too. And, and no, I'm not gonna make the breakdown video over here. We're gonna go back to my room, but uh, I need a transition, so. Oh, sorry. So now let's talk about the pre planning process, basically, how I actually pre plan this entire video. So the application or the website that I used to plan this entire video was Millenote. Most of you guys might have already known this app, so it's not really, I don't really want to give a big introduction here because it's a great app and it's a great website for you guys to plan your videos in the future. So let me just go through this quickly because we have to talk about the shooting and also the editing. So yeah. So the first thing that you guys are seeing up here is basically the dialogues. The dialogues are basically what narrates the entire video. Uh, it was whatever the words that I said basically during the interview. And then if you guys see here, I wrote in interview style, place the camera slightly above highly moody lighting by bright background, place camera in shadow mode. These are just some descriptions that I just add while I'm pre-planning this entire video so that I can remember it while I'm shooting the video. So yeah. And then when you get slow it down, you can see there's this thing called music selection. This is where I uh, just lay down all the musics that I want to use throughout this entire video. So the first one that you guys can see over here is that no one is there but one day. What I'm trying to say here is that starting from the sentence no one is there until but one day there will be a song playing for that particular section of the video and then once it gets to the next sentence there will be another song playing and then another sentence another song and so on and so forth. So this way I know which song I should be using for which part of the video and it really helps me a lot when it comes to the editing. I mean I would also highly recommend you guys to do the same if you guys can because it's gonna really be helpful. Uh, and also if you guys have all your songs nailed down before getting to the shoot it will also really help you to visualize your shots in mind so that it's also going to make your shots look a lot better and also all the shots going to fit into the music a lot more better and it's also going to have a better flow overall hope this really makes sense and then next you guys can see over here called mood board and this is the key for the entire planning process in my opinion so this is where I nailed down all the I basically plan out all the shots that I want to get for the entire project so that it's going to be a lot easier for me to uh, get the shots that I want to get. So for example over here I have like interview setup first I want to shoot that and then I want to shoot a tie shot and then there's a shot of me looking at the shoes, throw the phone in the bed, breathing shot, head wide shot running. These are basically the shots that I want to get for the entire project. So as you guys can see over here this is where I actually plan out the shots and how the transition between each clip should happen and basically the shots that I have to get. For example, the first shot over here, I want to get a tight close-up of my shoe, basically wearing the shoe. And I kind of get something similar to that because if you guys look at the first shot, not the first shot of the camera uh, looking down, it was basically the next following shot where I'm looking at the shoe, right? That was supposed to be this shot, but I did not end up going for this shot because it kind of did not make sense. And this is why I'm going to talk, I'm going to say this thing. Some things you plan in, inside your software or inside your app might not really make sense when you start to shoot so in that part you really have to just improvise some of the shots and get something similar to that or you just have to scrap some ideas and shoot something completely different but then that would end up working in the edit for example this one i said i'm gonna shoot this entire first part in slow motion but then i did not end up shooting the first scene in slow motion because it kind of did not make sense so while i was shooting the the beginning part of the video I actually the basically the the camera panning down I actually shot it six times so the first one was just the first four if I'm not wrong was just all in 25 fps with just different focal lengths and then the last two was actually in slow motion but then I did not going for the slow motion shots because it kind of did not make sense for the edit and for the song that I picked so I just went for the normal 25 fps shot so you see it really just depends because some shots that you have planned here might not really make sense while you're shooting or some some scenes that you have shot might not really how to say make sense in the edit but then you really have to just figure out and see which actually which scene 
tells the story and you have to pick a shot that actually tells the story and not dragging the story for too long. Hope this really makes sense. So as you guys can see over here, there's quite a lot of images over here, right? These are the images that I got off of a website called Short Deck, which also some of you guys might have already heard. It's basically a website where they have a ton of film grabs from uh, popular movies, not even popular movies, quite a lot of movies, uh, TV shows, and now I think they also have music videos, which is pretty cool. So they basically have uh, a lot of film grabs from different movies. So I just uh, went to their website and just grabbed some of the film grabs that I needed to make this video. For example, I take this shot, I downloaded this particular uh, image from their website because I want to get a shot that is similar, somewhat similar to this shot uh, for me wearing my shoe and then same for this one, I want to make sure that I'm uh, getting something similar to that and especially this shot, yes some of the shots that you guys are looking here might not really be the exact translation in the final output but then it's somewhat similar and it really helps me to get the shots that I actually wanted to get. And it's not really necessary that it has to be something similar to this. It, all of these images over here was just like for me to spark an idea on how, how I actually want to compose my image. So yeah, so same for this one. For example, here I want to get a wide shot of me running. I did that here. I have a pre-planning and then I want to get a shot of me like opening the shoe rack and then putting my shoe inside. Sorry, taking out my shoe. I got that also here. And then I got also some shots of breathing and then the final scene. So. It just went like this and again and here I got also a lot of my description over here like uh, how I actually want to uh, shoot the particular scene. For example here I decided to, I, I want to have a shot where I'm looking at the phone and then cut to focus on the bed and then I throw the phone on the bed and then I open the door and then I go out. This is basically the entire scene. So I just describe it here so that while I'm shooting I know what shot I should be getting so that when I, so it's not like when I'm sitting on the edit I realize that I didn't get some shots that I'm supposed to be getting. So, yeah, that's about the pre-planning. Now let's talk about the shooting process. So now let's talk about the shooting process. I'm going to talk about how I actually uh, shot this entire video. Let me just start by saying that it was really difficult because, you know, being the person behind the camera and also the person in front of the camera and taking care of everything, it was really difficult. And I'm at the end of basically this part, I'm going to talk about some things that I wish I could have done differently. And so, yeah. so now let's talk about the shooting process which was really fun, but at the same time difficult. But let me explain about it. So the first thing that I really enjoyed shooting in this, shooting this entire project was, it was just me. I was the one who's behind the camera and also in front of the camera. Yes, it was also fun, but it was also difficult because let's say if you take the first shot where the gimbal looks up and then straight away looking down, that shot alone took me six tries before landing on the final one that you guys saw in the video. Because sometimes I started to run really slow that the camera just doesn't, doesn't pick up me or sometimes the camera really just moves too quick and I'm by the time the camera stops in that final position I was already out the frame. So these are the things that I really have to balance both sides which was really difficult. For example another shot that I can say the, the part where I'm actually jumping on top of the camera and just running that shot alone also took me about 40 minutes to get it. I'm not lying it's just because some shots I realized that people were standing right in front of the camera so I just can't use that or some shots just is out of focus and I, there's nothing I can do about it. And yes, I can use the manual focus but then it's really, really hard because I can't be the one who's also focusing and also being in that position. And I'm, let's say if I'm shooting a video like this, I can let's say have uh, an object just in the place that I'm sitting and I can just focus on that and then I can just replace the object for me. But then when I'm shooting outside, I can't really bring a lot of things. Uh, that brings me nicely into the next segment where I wanted to talk about the things that I brought basically when I'm shooting outside. It was basically not a lot. I brought my camera, I brought my mic and then I brought my tripod. That's all. It was just the day one that I brought my gimbal and that is also to just get the top shot and that's all. That's the front shot, the beginning shot, that's all. After that, I did not use the gimbal or I did not use anything else. It was just my camera and my tripod and the microphone. That's all. So the tip that I would like to give you guys here is to keep your gears as minimal as possible. Your gears must be the last thing that you have to carry around because yes, you know, your story is the key and everything. But then when you guys are shooting something outdoors and you're bringing all the, your camera equipment and your tripod, you really have to be careful about your gears. And also you don't want to carry a lot of things because it's really going to make you feel tired by the end of the shooting. So try to just bring a minimal package of gears. So as I told before, I just brought my camera, my microphone and my tripod and that's all. 
And believe me when I say these are the three things that I need to record the entire project. Yeah, some cases you might need a gimbal, but it's just it's just the additional things that you need after that. It's not really it's not really the key for the shoot entirely. Hope that really makes sense. Next, before showing you guys how I edited this entire project, I'm gonna talk about some things that I wish I could have done differently. Which is that I really wish I could have a second person helping me out throughout this entire shoot. At least, the, at least I really wish I, I was shooting someone instead of I'm being inside the video. So I really wish I could have someone else in front of the camera instead of me so that I can focus on just shooting the entire video and taking care of the shots than also being inside the video. So that's about it. That's the only thing that I wish I could have done differently. But other than that, everything was just the way it is and I don't want to change anything else. So yeah, that's about the shooting process. Now let's get into the editing process. So now let's get into the editing process. So when it comes to editing, this is basically the timeline. Uh, as you guys can see over here, the as you guys can see, there's just like one or two layers of video clips. But then as soon as we get down, there's just a lot of audio, which is the sound design that I did. So I got an idea. I'm not going to play this entire video right now because it's going to be really boring. So I'm going to be playing the video right up here and the timeline down here so that you guys can actually watch the video again with the timeline so that you guys can actually understand what I'm going to talk about later in the editing process. So watch the video first. No one is there. It's you versus you. You can decide to stall or let it go as it is. I've always not been a person who does any kind of sports. But one day I decided to go for a run, just out of curiosity because I was really just watching a lot of these videos saying that you know running really helps to boost creativity and it just helps you to be more productive and I wanted to really just try it for myself. It was hard in day one, but on second day, my mindset changed. There are rocky parts and watery roads that I have to pass through. But then, I remind myself that it was me the one who decided to go for a run and enjoy what the nature has to offer on that day. Then, when I understood this, I started to take things slow and a moment to breathe. Running has made me realize the beauty of nature and how much we should be grateful for it. And of course, it inspires me and it makes me feel a lot more productive than before. So now let me just show you guys how I edited this entire project. It was really easy for me to edit this project. I mean, I wouldn't say it's really easy, but it's quite easy for me to edit this entire project just because I've already pre-planned a lot of things uh, in the pre-planning process. So it really makes me just feel less stressed about how I actually want to put together the video because it's basically what you guys saw over here. The shot by shot, transition by transition, everything that you guys are looking here is basically the final video. So yeah. So as you guys can see over here, I used quite a lot of this audio masking technique and I actually wanted to talk about it in this video. So let me just solo this track and let me show you guys what it actually does. It's basically what the, the default transition does. It's basically this constant power. What it does is basically this. It basically just fades out the audio. So, but then sometimes you really have less control over this. So that's when, when you use this audio masking. Let me show you guys how to do that. Just click P on your keyboard and you guys are going to see your selection key just turn into this pen tool. 
and now you can just click on the audio and just reduce it or increase it depending on where you want for example if i increase it over here the audio is gonna just fade in go up come down and then it's gonna eventually fade away so yeah that's a pretty good tip and you guys can use it in quite a lot of places for example i used it in my sound design uh, when it comes to sound design that's when this tool is going to be really helpful i'm going to talk about this later so yeah and another thing that i also want to talk about here is that i don't know how many of you guys noticed in this shot let me just play it play it again for you guys it was me the one who decided this to shot. go for a run and enjoy what the nature has to offer I don't know how many figures noticed, but there is quite a lot of camera movement over there. And as I told before, I shot this entire project by myself and you guys might be asking then, who was holding the camera? The thing is, there wasn't anyone. I actually used this effect called camera movement that I found on the internet. So I just used that one uh, for these clips and it really gives this kind of a natural handheld look. I actually don't use it too much. I don't really use it too often, but when I was looking at the shot, I, I feel like it's quite boring and was just static. Basically, a lot of the shot before this was just all static. So I wanted to try to make this last two shots of this segment where I'm talking about... Uh, basically, I call this segment the progression, where I'm talking about uh, how I actually got the interest from like a person that has no interest to running to someone who actually have the interest to running. It's basically the entire part. So I wanted to have a movement at the end of the segment so that's when i actually used one of this effect i think if i'm not mistaken i used the yeah white smooth motion because it's a white shot and i want a uh, really smooth motion and same for this shot but this shot i actually used a normal because it wasn't a white shot but it really helps to bring together a video perfectly i mean it really helps to bring a video to life because otherwise if i just left this shot just to be a static shot it would look really boring and it would look really dull but if i add this type of a uh, camera movement it, it will look really dynamic as you guys can see over here as you guys can see the movement are really subtle but then it really adds up to the video okay so that's about when it comes to the basic editing there's nothing much i did here it was just basic cuts and there wasn't a lot of transition uh, that i add into this video except i think around this part i did this type of a film transition but that's that's about it i didn't do any other transition in this entire video it was just that uh, little film effect because it looks pretty cool so now that's about the editing process it was basically just basic cuts uh, and as I told that was just one transition now let's get into the sound designing process so let's just start from the beginning over here let's let me just uh, solo all this sound designing sound all this track so that you guys can only listen to the sound design that I did So all the sounds that you guys have listened right now was not recorded on spot. All of this was actually done in post. It was all the sound designing that I did. And it really sounds natural. That's the great part about sound design. For example, if I also enable the sound of the clip, you can see that the overall clip is quite loud and it's not really, I mean, it sounds good, but I don't really thought it would actually sync up with the music because if I just solo the sound and So I don't know how to really explain this, but when there is sound and there's my own sound design, it sounds a lot more uh, better in my opinion. And also it doesn't feel like the, the audio from the clip is overpowering this entire uh, music or something. So yeah, it really just depends and it really depends on which type of shots requires the sound design because some shots might not even require a sound design. For example, if you're shooting a, a footage of a lake, for example, yes, you can also add sounds of a lake later in post, but if let's say, the clip that you guys shot is already quiet on spot. You don't really have to need to do any type of sound design. You can do it on top of it, but it all comes down just to you if you want to do it or not. So hope this really makes sense. But for this, I decided to do it. As I told before, I feel like the audio from the clip is not really that great. So because I was just shooting on my normal uh, microphone, it was just a Rode Video Micro. I mean, it's a great microphone, but I don't think so it could able to pick up the sounds of me of my steps or of my breathing so i just add that all in post 
So if we go a little bit in front, yeah, over here. Let me just play with the sound so that you guys can actually just have a look at this particular part in the video. So you see now, without any type of sound design, it really just feels a lot boring. For example, look at the, have a look at the shot where my feet is stepping on the ground and I want to make sure that the audience also feels the same way because note that before this, the, the character in the video, he was talking about why he actually did not want to go for a run, but then he ended up going for a run. So I want to make sure that that particular part in the video has an impact to the audience. So what I did was that basically I did my, I add the riser. So just hear that out. So let me just uh, solo the thing and you can just hear this riser. So if you, if you guys notice in this uh, timeline that you guys can see two type of sound design over here. If I just mute this, if I just, yeah, the audio is already muted. So just have a look at this. This is the riser and this is the boom. Basically, this is where it's a type of sound effect that really emphasizes uh, a hit in the frame. For example, let me just uh, solo this particular track so you guys can actually focus on that one. So it's basically a hit, right? So when I combine it with the music and also the riser, this is what you get. So if let's say you guys are wearing headphones and watch it, watch this uh, particular video, you guys can actually feel the impact. Uh, but otherwise, even if you guys are watching just using your phone, I hope you guys can actually feel the impact. So these are the little things that you guys can do in the post to really make your entire video stand out. These are the little things. You don't really need to do something massive to make your video looks great. So if we go a little bit more into the video, and as you guys can notice over here, basically until this part where he's running, right? Basically until this part, there was there's quite a lot of sound design that I did. But as soon as we get to the last part where I start, but this part basically talks about the realization that I has, basically the character in the video has when he actually eventually starts to run. So in that part, I really want to make the audience feel kind of really calm and I don't want to add a lot of things in that portion of the video, basically the last part of the video. So I also picked a music that is kind of really slow. So you guys can hear that. So it was just kind of like a drone music where it's only just like some piano keys and that's about it. But if you guys take a look at the rest of the two songs that I've used, it's kind of really high tempo and it has a lot of bass and it's it's basically a beat. But then when you get into the last part of the video where I'm talking about the character realizing the benefits of running, it's kind of slow. And that's what I want to provide to the audience when they are watching this video. So, so that's why I decided not to do a lot of sound design. I just wanted to leave it to be really calm and I wanted to uh, make the audience feel the silence at the end of the video. So that's why there's not really much sound design. That's just some sounds from the footage, and but that's about it. There's nothing much I added on top of it. And this part really evokes the emotion of this character, you know, from someone who's being not really that interested in running, but then to someone who actually go for a run without giving up. That is the progression of the character in my opinion. So that's what I wanted to try to convey with this from this video. So that's what I basically did. That's about it. It's, uh, it's quite easy for you to edit a project like this if you have already nailed down all the uh, key things in the planning process so that you don't really have to scratch your head later when it comes to editing or even shooting for that case. So, I mean, yeah, that's about it. If you guys have any other questions about shooting, planning or editing, just leave them down in the comment section down below. I will try to make an in-depth video just focusing on that part. Uh, I probably know this video is already quite long because I already talk about shooting, planning and also pre-planning. So I also don't want to make you guys feel bored. So that's about it for this video, guys. I hope you guys take away something from this video. So yeah, that's about it. Hope you guys like this video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we are really close to hitting 200 subscribers. Hopefully we can hit that by this year. That would be really cool. Uh, so yeah, thank you for so much for being here today, watching me, watching, uh, watching basically this entire video. And so thank you so much for watching this video and being here until the end. 
and I'll be meeting you guys in the next video. Bye. It is definitely pretty tiring. This is two shots in and I'm already feeling like too tired. And let me just show you guys the setup. I just really do wish there could be someone to help me. And probably that's the mistake I did. I should definitely, you know, call maybe someone to just help me manage all this stuff so it'd be more easy for me to just focus on the filming. But it's fine, it's the first time that we're doing it. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm even going to make a BTS video for this uh, spec project. So if you guys see this, then it's good. Yeah.